photography can definitely be frustrating. Whether you're a beginner or an expert, I've been doing this since 2017, pretty much, when it comes to terms of taking pictures of, taking seriously my pictures of my products. And although it gets easier along the way because you learn the tricks um, and tips that help you get through it, navigate through it uh, easier, Along the way, there's still a lot that I wish that somebody could have told me, especially as a beginner just getting started. So I'm going to do two videos for you guys on how I do my product photography. Um, this first one is going to be super beginner friendly. Um, everybody's going to be able to get started uh, because I always say that if you, before you buy any expensive equipment, before you go out and get the cameras, get the lighting, get the props, all of that, you have to be very good at taking pictures with anything. So we're gonna start out with just simple camera phone photography using outdoor lighting, not these expensive lights. And then the second video, once you've mastered getting down that simple, inexpensive, um, low stress, low cost to you product photography, then we're gonna get into how to do indoor and a little bit more intermediate photography where I'm gonna be telling you all the links for everything that I have, all of my equipment, um, I'll be using my camera instead of my phone for professional settings because um, your phone is a lot more automatic than it is for your camera. And you can get more automatic cameras. We'll get into that in case you're beginning for that as well. So I'm going to give you two very well-rounded videos basically explaining everything that I personally do to get the types of photos that I get for those of you guys that like my style of photography. And then you can take the little tidbits that I give you and carry that forward into your own photography and what you want to do with it. So. Let's go ahead and jump into what type of equipment I use and then we'll go ahead and move forward with everything outside. So first and foremost, you guys heard me mention I'm using my camera. A lot of people like iPhones and my personal opinion, I'm sorry for my iPhone lovers, I have to say it, I definitely prefer my Samsung Galaxy. Um, and the thing is, the Samsung Galaxy, you can take good photos with iPhones, um, good pictures with iPhones, you can. So you can kind of use this if you do have an iPhone as well. Um, it's really the same thing. But I, in my opinion, from what I've seen with cameras, your Samsung just has better quality. I think it has more megapixels and just has for a long, longer period of time. So the benefit of using a camera with your photography is that it's automatic. Your settings are automatic. A lot of the complication when it comes to taking pictures, whether it's with, especially once you get a camera, um, is that the settings. You have to adjust certain aperture, certain focus, your focal points, um, and shutter speed to be able to pick up the picture and get it nice and crisp and sharp. Okay? And what your camera does is it automatically does these things for you. I do like to shoot, um, especially my videos, in 60 UHD, which it has this option on this phone. Um, and then we're going to be moving outside to get the perfect type of lighting. It doesn't matter if you are by a window when it comes to natural sunlight, if you are, if it's a cloudy day, as long as it's really not rainy, um, that's the benefit, is that it's actually harder to work with studio lights than it is natural sunlight. Natural sunlight gives you everything that you need, full coverage, especially during the golden hours of the day. Depending on what time you shoot, the sun can cast certain shadows. If you want to get minimal shadows, you're definitely going to go around noontime where it is the sun is at the highest or on a cloudy day where it's still not too dark outside. And today is kind of a little bit overcast and cloudy. I'm in Phoenix. Um, so those are some of the pros when it comes to that. And natural sunlight's free. You can go outside, but it does limit you. So here's some of the cons with it. Some of the cons with natural sunlight is that you have to be outside. You really don't have any control factor out there. I've had several disasters when it comes to my props being blown over by the wind, some sort of hair or leaf floating in the wind and getting into right into my pictures as I'm taking the shot. And sometimes, you know, especially if you guys are making like the swirls and the little um, butter mountains and things like that, they can melt in the heat. Um, I've had props get knocked over um, and just ruin the shot and I have to do it all over again. So there is a little bit of prep that you do sometimes. A lot of fake props come into play. You can freeze your butters ahead of time to make sure that everything is going to stay in place as best as possible, especially during the summer. The summer when you get the best sunlight is also when it tends to be the harshest on your product. So you have to move very quickly, even for scrubs. There's just a lot to know outside. It's unpredictable, you really don't have any control. 
However, when you're working with studio lights, it gives you control to where you get to set what type of lighting you want. If you want it more moody, if you want it higher, if you want it lower, as you guys can see, you can get different types of um, shading materials to help with shadows because outside you really just don't have any of that control. So those are some of the things you got to take into account whenever it comes to taking outside photography. And indoor or outdoor, I use basically the same setup. You can get paper, stock papers from Michaels. Um, as I've shown you in my previous videos, you just go to Michaels, they have papers. Um, but those are also limiting because they only give you a specific amount of space to work with. So you just have to keep this in mind whenever you're doing um, photography. Uh, I like to work with bigger papers, as you can see in the back. And I link those as well on Amazon. Some of them I get, and you can just browse and see what different colors they have. They're pretty water and weatherproof, so you can get a lot done with them. Um, you just have to be very tedious about keeping them clean. I use like pants hangers to hang them up. Um, the stand I use is a simple T stand. This one is bigger. You can use a smaller one. I recently got a bigger one because it's a little bit more heavy duty, which um, suits better what I do. And um, then I also have just a regular table. And you can use any type of table. If you really don't want to take them on the ground, as long as the spot space is clear, that's okay too. But you can get any kind of foldable table. I'll link mine, of course. And just something to set the products on that gives your papers enough space and your products enough space so you can let them, um, you know, so you can properly stage them for the picture. So now that we've talked about the equipment, I'll show you how I set up outside and explain a little bit more about the lighting features. I'll be doing this portion on my phone so you, and you guys are going to see exactly how I take these pictures live, how I stage and where I set my camera um, to ensure that you guys get those beautiful shots outdoors. So let's go. Okay, you guys will have to forgive me here. I forgot um, to turn my mic on. So I'm talking, explaining certain things to you guys here and it totally went unrecorded. So I'm just going to tell you here. Um, basically, we're outside now, and I am uh, going to explain to you the importance of wiping your camera. It may seem like it's something simple and totally that you would remember, but a lot of people forget, and it affects the clarity. So as you can see in the beginning, it was a little bit... Um, it kind of looks very blurry whenever you don't wipe it, but here I went ahead and wiped it, and now you can see exactly how much clearer it is. So... What you see on the left side of my face is that's where the sunlight is and that's why it's a little bit shinier there because that's where the sunlight is reflecting and so you always want to make sure that um, your sunlight is going to be directly in front of your subject your subject being the product so here you see me turning the sunlight is directly above me and the higher the sun the less shadows you're going to have um, also on cloudy days there tends to not be too many shadows because the clouds kind of act as it act as a natural diffuser for it so it's a little bit of an offset um but you know depending on what you like you can also ed um, edit the shadows out and then here as you guys can see i had to select where i put um, my camera equipment carefully in this area you can see my dogs hanging out right there um there are some trees that would be affecting my sunlight and adding casting extra shadows to my photos so where i'm actually at is a very clear area it's open and it has the sun coming down directly onto it facing forward just like i need it and that's going to be the perfect place to set up my um, pictures and my camera set so that way it can get the best lighting and have the best um, angles and overall coverage. You really want your subject to be in front of the sun, not behind it or not on the side, because you want it to, the, you're utilizing the sunlight outside so it can reflect very clearly onto your product. So here I have my table. This is just a simple table um, that I got from Amazon. You can pick them up from Walmart as well. You want it to be it doesn't have to be gigantic the bigger the better but i have this um table because it's foldable so i can compact it into my um photography closet and put it away it's easy to maneuver and set up um but it also has a nice amount of space up there so i can fit my products on there if you work with a small space you're just going to have a lot less room to shoot and have your equipment on so you want to keep that in mind and there's different types of stands i do have another one that's larger whenever i'm shooting people or just um bigger type of areas myself included 
And this is a simple tea stand. There are smaller ones that you can use as well, but this one has a good size and it gets really tall. So that was a little bit of a problem I had with this is I didn't want it too far above my table. So I was able to adjust it to get it smaller, but I do have this linked in the video below. And here I wanted to show you, these are my backgrounds. You could easily get some backgrounds from Michaels. They're super cheap. These are a little bit more expensive because they're bigger and they're easier to clean up. But if you get some papers from Michaels, um, you can get any, they can be anywhere from 50 cents to maybe like less than $2. So it's totally up to you. You can mix and match the colors. That's what I used to do. And I absolutely love the results that I got from them as well. And then there you can see I have those hangers. So those are just some hangers um, that you would hang up pants with. And they're actually really handy for um, storing these and keeping them clean because you don't want them to get wrinkled. Once they're wrinkled, you have to do a lot of editing to get that out of your shot. So you just want to keep that in mind when it comes to storing them. So here we have our set and you can see these clamps are important because they keep the papers still and they keep your subject area from flying away. Um, and so what I'm doing here is moving my camera, getting up nice and close, because what you're going to see here on the side, that's going to be the margins that you have to work in. And I'm going to have to crop those out because obviously we wouldn't want that in the picture where you could see the back of what's going on in the picture, all types of busyness. So you can see with my finger, I'm pointing out the areas that you're going to focus on cropping out. And that's something that you just want to keep in mind when you're taking the picture, because if you have, say, if you're lining up like three or four different products, you're going to end up cropping some of those products out if they end up crossing past those margin lines to where you're going to have to crop. So I make sure that everything is nice and laying flat. There's nothing in the background. Um, you know, sometimes when you're outside, if it's windy, especially like it is today, you can stuff flies into your picture and you just want to make sure you give it a good brush up before adding your subject. I'm moving in as close as possible. Um, I don't recommend doing using the zoom feature on your phone because it will distort your picture. It will make it a little bit more pixelated and that's harder to edit. It's not gonna be as crisp and as sharp. You really wanna just try to use the natural settings that it has at hand here. And so I'm setting up my picture to get a straight shot, okay? So this is just straight forward picture um, product, just looking at the, at the picture and it's the center of attention. You pull it a little bit forward from the back of the of the back of the backdrop that we have here and it makes so that it gives it an effect to where it just focuses really sharply and nicely on our subject here and then so what i'm gonna do is i'm just going to add a little bit of the product i have i always make extra product for the product photo shoot so it never really goes to waste because i mean use it for props and then i have a cherry there that i'm going to put it on top to kind of give it this cute cake type of feel and so i'm just going to cover the top in our actual product this is the actual texture of the product and it's nice to use the actual product so that people can see um fall in love with that texture that they're actually going to be getting sometimes you have to use fake props um, to get the point across but it really depends i like to use actual product and as many real props as i possibly can and then i'm going to stick the cherry on top and then I'm going to begin to start photographing right now in video. You can photograph in video on your camera. It does have those features. I'm going to put a little, pull it a little bit back because I'm going to, I want to get the stem and everything that's included in the picture. Okay. And, um, see, as I was telling you, there's flies that fly around outside can be very volatile. So you just have to be prepared, um, for whatever comes, but shooting in video. So I'm taking pictures live actually while this video is rolling and um they're gonna look just like this with great quality you can do this with your phone or you can just snap pictures manually but i find that this setup looks really well so let's jump over into the editing welcome to the editing portion of our tutorial i do apologize in advance if you guys hear any busy noises um i have dogs i live in a quite busy neighborhood so you guys are going to hear what you're going to hear but i'm going to do my best to just explain things to you guys so we just got done taking our picture and we're going to go to the gallery here are some of the shots that we got live in video while i was showing you guys everything that i do okay so they all look pretty similar to me they look great i don't see any issues with any of them so i'm just going to pick one and i'm editing this right in my um phone application here 
So I'm just gonna hit that and the key is to do minimal edits. The more you process your photos, the more blurry and pixelated they can become. That's just naturally what happens with editing. So you really want editing to be minimal. So I'm just tucking in the margins here using the cropping method and I'm gonna try to get it as straight as I can just to get the edges and the sides out just so that we have just our picture here and nothing else in the background. And I usually straighten it if I see it's crooked, but it actually looks pretty straightforward to me. So if you want, you could sit here and try to make the sides perfect. This is as far as I'm gonna go with it. I think it looks good. So I'm going to hit save. And then the editing apps that I like to use, sometimes I use Canva if I feel like I need to, I'll show you guys a cool trick that I use Canva, but sometimes I like to brighten up the background or change the background colors, and I can specifically separate that in Canva. You can also do that in Lightroom. It's a little bit more complicated. Um, I do use it sometimes, but in this case, I'm just gonna use Canva because it's easier for me personally. Um, but Lightroom is a good one to have, and Photoshop Express. Photoshop Express is where I like to do the majority of the editing. There are some of the pictures there. I think it was this one. Yep, that I cropped out. So just minimal adjustments here. Um, you can use the healing feature. Say if, you know, life happens and something lands in your photo that you don't want to be there. This smooths it out. Canva also has this feature, but I highly recommend using this only in a, um, Adobe Photoshop or um, Photoshop Express because of the fact that it just does a cleaner remove if you are looking to remove anything in the background. It's much more simple. It comes off clean, but you want to be careful because see, like for example, if I needed to clean up something here, it can create extra mirroring. So you just want to make sure that really there's not too much going on in the back of your photos that you really don't have to edit. But just in case you do, this feature is here for you. And then I like to bring up the clarity because I really like crystal clear pictures. As you can see, sometimes it can darken them or make it a little bit over pixelated. So you just wanna watch this as you're editing your photos, but I like them to be as clear as possible. Um, you can reverse that clarity and get kind of like a hazy type of picture. I used to do those, but that's up to you. It just depends on what kind of specific aesthetic you like. I do like to dehaze, because again, I like for it to be as clear as possible. And then you can play with the lighting and brighten it um, a few different ways using exposure, contrast, the whites, highlights. Those are what I like to use. I leave the exposure alone because it generally tends to go overboard with the whitening. I like to bring the contrast down because it kind of softens the picture up because as you notice, the texturizing can make it a little bit harsh and it kind of helps to brighten it up. Then I also bring up the highlights. I also like to bring the shadows up just to give it more brightness. As you can see here, it looks really nice already. And then to reduce a lot of that, what they call in photography is noise. A lot of the pixelation, you're going to come to the reducing the luminance here. And it takes out a lot of that extra noise. But you also want to be careful with this because if you use too much, it can kind of make it fuzzy or look a little bit too cartoony in my opinion. And then brightness and saturation, or I'm sorry, vibrance and saturation. I like to bring up the vibrance to keep those colors looking nice and rich. See those beautiful colors. And then just a teeny bit of saturation. Again, just be careful with the coloring because it can just get very, um, it can just look really super colorful and not in a good way. And then you just clean up any other features that you need to clean up. And basically here we have our beautiful picture. It looks really great. Um, you can, if you wanted to do some more adjustments, bring up the luminance a little more and make it, give it a little bit more smoothness to it. Same thing with reducing color noise. For color noise is specifically that type of noise I was talking about, but it comes from um, too much color enhancement. So minimal is better here. I really do like this one. So it says it's saved here with the watermark. I don't like that they do that sometimes. If that happens to you, 
it's easy to fix okay there's their watermark there on the bottom just like they said i'm gonna remove it because i don't know why they're starting to do that now and then object eraser this is another way that you can erase things from the background that you find undesirable okay draw a circle around it erase and then it's like it never happened can't really see it too much there uh, I can see a little bit of the remnants left behind and then you can always go back into the editor and smooth that out if you want to we'll go we'll do it through Photoshop Express no because then they gonna make the watermark again um, and so we're just gonna take it over to Canva I have presets here for when I edit this is one of them so what I'm gonna do here is just add another page I'll be forgetting how to do it in this context, but add page and then I'm going to X out. Okay. And it's still showing me here. There we go. And I'm going to add in from the gallery picture we just took. And then Sorry guys, I'm gonna turn it to the side just so I can get to the where I want it to go. It messes me up when I turn it sideways. There we go. I'm just gonna hit that X button. Okay. And then I'm gonna back out of here just so I can try to click on it because it's just okay and then so I'm just gonna stretch this out here just so I can be able to crop it again and then now what I was saying is if you wanted to edit the photo and adjust it. Okay, see here it says right here that you can select the whole image, the foreground or the background. I'm gonna show you. So what it does is it selects that image and then it takes the background and say if I wanted to make that bluer, which that looks really pretty, right? Kind of like almost a purplish blue and brighten it or darken it, I could do either. You can just do all kinds of things here. I really love this feature for that reason. You can brighten the color. You can bring in more vibrance here, bring in more saturation and just make it look that much more gorgeous. And then usually I'll come back to the foreground, which is just the object selected and bring up the brightness just to make it stand out that much more. I'm going to go ahead and download it. Um, in this case, sometimes I say if you're going to do PNG, you can go ahead and do that. Um, you can select the one page that you're working on. Otherwise, it'll copy all of them at once. And then um, you can save it that way with through PNG. JPG, it happens to be the best resolution when you down, especially when you're putting it online and through different apps that are going to reduce the resolution. And you're going to hit download. And then for the final time, we're gonna go here. And I really like these colors and I'm just gonna do one final crop. And this is the final result of our picture. I think it looks super cute. And we're gonna save it. And that's the picture that we took 
just with my camera phone. That was very simple outside sunlight. Um, anybody can really do it. If you wanted to go and erase that shading right there, you can really do that through any other app, which you can see me highlighting with my pen. But I think this looks great the way that it is. It's a nice high quality picture that's taken with the phone. It's got the perfect sunlighting to it. It's all around got great lighting. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you definitely stick around for the intermediate video. I'm gonna be taking this picture again, but using my indoor lighting and my professional camera. And I'm going to link all the supplies for all the lightings that I do talk about my settings and really get into it. It's going to be nice and information heavy for you guys. Um, as a, and, and a little bit, if you just want to get more in depth with how to shoot in a more controlled setting and get those beautiful studio pictures. So I will be seeing you guys on that one. Make sure to check into the Patreon. It will be available there and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.